And we're back. It's your boy, Wardo Jackson, CEO, founder, creator of the great Cinema Draft and Draft Stream Games, where daily fantasy sports meets the movies. And they're also back. You know them. You love them. You tolerate them, especially G-Nice. <laughs> it's you the tripod. The tripod. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Guess who's Bizak? What's up, yes. good people? Return champion. You know him as the Working Black Rider, Chocolate Cardinal. Also now a. I, I, I'm, let me make sure I got your title right. You know, you're <laughs> you're moving up in the world. Are you story editor? Are you co-producer? What are you? Mr. I am supervising producer. Oh, hello. Hey, oh, hello. He just, he just, well, I'm sorry, I missed that. Can you say that again? You dropped it so <laughs> smoothly. Can you say it again? Supervising producer of the Republic of Sarah coming to the CW at some point. At some point, yes. Not have to, <laughs> to start filming because of COVID, COVID uh, 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 quarantine stuff, but they are en route, on track to doing that. It is Kevin Garnett. Anything here, is here, possible. Here, here, here. Yes. All right. And, uh, and also, he's a backyard DJ extraordinaire. And we have G Nice. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm and Steve Harvey esque. Thank you very much. Fuck it. Well, you, you're hiding all of your identity, so all of your accolades cannot be this, this announced. Is true. This is true. This is I could Father be a millionaire. Three. Father of three, married to a to a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. I mean, that's about as best we can go, right? That's the best <laughs> I got. Her her resume. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Yep, she, she props you up. All right. In our Andy Cohen-inspired Watch What Happens lifestyle drinking game tonight shall be the word changed. Every time you hear one of us say this word, take a sip of what you're sipping, because tonight's pod will end up covering our favorite movies that have changed the course of history. All right. And I'm looking for my... There we go. We, of course, are known as the show with no segues. We're going to our next segment called Tell Me Something Good, because while the rest of this world is has been on the best behavior and the U.S. is still a viral dumpster fire, I am in desperate need of something good. So tell me something good, fellas. KG, you got here first, on time, as usual. Oh. I was on time. You said the best stuff. <laughs> I was on time. Let's be fair. <laughs> no, be on brand, you guys. Just take it. Just take it and be yeah. quiet. All right. What do you got? Uh, tell you something good. Yeah. Uh, Toby Nwigwe. Mm, okay. Rap artist out of Houston is going on virtual tour, I think, uh, this weekend or coming up. So if you've seen his um, viral videos on Instagram, G-Nice, I know you love Instagram, yeah, uh, yeah, you can I'll catch him it. in concert, uh, you know, Houston's finest, the next wave of uh, young conscious hip hop, if you will. Nigerian oh, okay. first generation. Backpacker. All right, I'm with it. Uh, what, how do you spell his name? The, the Jigwe? N W I G. Oh, that's all. That's all I don't feel like needed. Oh, okay. That's how you say his name. Okay, I've actually seen this guy around on the digital streets. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So he's good, though, right? He's good. He's good. He's in the digital streets, as you say. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll have to cop him in the digital streets. That's all. all right, the, that's all the good news I got for you. That's it. All right. Yeah. Everything else is dumpster. Oh yeah. California's on fire. That's not great news. Uh, it was me. 117 over the weekend. Yeah, not good out here. Some straight Vegas numbers. You're welcome. All right, G Nice, what about you? Um, well, as Kevin alluded to, I have reluctantly tried to embrace things that I think are stupid. So I joined Instagram. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just a decade later. That's that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> it was a very big moment. I joined Instagram. I can't remember why. And the truth What's your right. handle? I, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look it up right now. We get you all a bunch of followers. We get you twelve yeah, followers. I don't want followers. I've got zero followers. I don't think I have any followers. <laughs> I think I follow nobody. I don't. I I I did it. Kevin convinced me because he was telling me I got to see the D nice DJ shit, yeah. uh, and I was like, all right, cool. And then essentially all I do is look at comic book artists and their fucking drawings. And that's pretty much what it is. And then now they've loaded my thing with a bunch of advertisements and things they think I want, which I don't want, so it irritates me. So I very rarely use it. Um, but one of the cool things was 
I used it yesterday for high row day or Monday oh. for high row day. And it was really cool. Although I don't know why it's called high road. It was totally pre-recorded, but it was still really cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to cool. find you, but if we go to well, your full name, it's definitely not you. So <laughs> there, there, there's no, a lot of What's the dude, that? He's a dude from South Carolina, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's trying to take my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright infringement. Yeah, he's a he's a young guy, but I'm like cool. Because when people, unfortunately, this is a super sad story. Ready? Uh, what do you call it? Cultural cul-de-sac? What do you call this? Yes, show? cultural yeah. cul-de-sac. Yes. So subplot, I have, you You guys know this, but to our audience, I have moved across the country and I started a brand new job. And many, many years ago, many, many years ago, I did a very small amount of m m modeling. And unfortunately, my old school, the old place I used to work, my my coworkers found those pictures and so they put them all up over my wow. they put them on my desk they put them all over it was super <laughs> oh, damn. yeah but jokes on them you look the same i still have your <laughs> well the so the kids found out and then i was at that school for so long i forgot about it so i forgot <laughs> that they're still out there and unfortunately my new boss found them wow. and now does every single every i'm not kidding when i say this every single meeting with the entire team where my face is her backdrop wow <laughs> wow that is next level trolling it is <laughs> i like don't know how to respond to it and to, 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 to talk about it or talk less we'll make it a, but it's on every single and like for for a couple of times like at least 10 other teachers also had it on their virtual backgrounds it is you need, you need to find dirt on the, what would ray ray donovan do <laughs> I heard on them <laughs> exactly, but I, but the reason I bring this up because that guy you found, the guy you found in, he yeah. disappoints me. He's supposed to be my cover, and yet he doesn't seem to take any. Like people keep digging, unfortunately. <laughs> Who somehow a large, you know, dark skinned black man? Not quite you. All right, fair enough. I mean, you, you are your avatar. Let's put it that way. Minus the the Van Dyke, you are your yeah. avatar. <laughs> I've got pretty good cover when you try to Google me. So <laughs> you got awesome cover. <laughs> hey, how, Wait, how do you call them uncut gems, KG? <laughs> exactly. I've got pages a, and pages. A, who was it? Jeff. One of one of my buddies out here uh, was asking me when he saw your name. It's like he goes, "Hey, is, hey, is that is that really him?" <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. That's it's how I really roll. Me. I met him when I was in Minnesota. Yeah, that's how I roll. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Let's go on to my favorite part of the episode, and it is what we're watching. Bo, 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 bo. Bo, bo, bo. Yes, no segues, never, not allowed, not on this show. All right, so first thing I'm watching, let me share my screen. Uh, oh, wow, nice blood, some damn. All right, uh, I'm on IMDb. Let's see, here we go. All right, so first thing I'm watching is the second season of The Boys. And I am all cut up. It is like that uh, as usual. Uh-oh. Uh, what, 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 do you not like The Boys? I haven't seen it yet. You're gonna kill this. Oh, you huh? haven't seen it yet? Oh, okay. Well, let me tell you. I saw the first season and I've read the books. I've read the books, I'm just gonna put that out there. I hear it's a lot different than the graphic novels from what I'm told. Like they, they made some-, some the, the first one is not. The first one is has a lot of similarities okay well what well especially in the second season they, they bring on a character called stormfront which in the, the graphic novels is like i guess some some man from like i guess hitler time or whatever in this case it's aya cash and so it was, it was right now at least through the first three episodes she's she's super snarky not quite i mean not quite what you expected but also you know not totally evil but then we see at the end of the third episode she's really kind of evil she really fits in. She's gonna give Homelander a run for his money, and I'm totally digging it. Uh, it's super bloody, and yeah, here it is. Yeah, here she goes. She, you know, she looks sweet, like kind of girl next doorish with a side shave, whatever. But she's really into her social media. Talks a lot of shit. She's really not here to make friends per se, but she really shows her true colors on that rooftop, and it is not nice. <laughs> Let's put it that way. She is. She definitely lives up to the characters inspired by. I don't know much about the graphic novel, but this is what I've been told. But I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. And I heard they're going to start releasing one episode a week to kind of stoke the conversation, which I guess is smart and good business, and also drags out what 
must be a delayed production slate for Amazon Prime. But it's the boys. It's awesome. It's great. Wait, they're going to re- delay? They're going to put it out? One- I thought they were going to put the whole thing no, out? No, they did last year. They put all 10 out, and it was awesome. I binged it over weekend. This year, they put out the first three, like uh, Apple TV Plus and Hulu style, and then they're going to like drag out like you know one a week, I guess, for like the remaining seven. So you haven't seen the whole thing yet? Not, 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 not season two, no. Just the top three. Top three. So, so a little backstory. The Boys is created by a guy named Garth Ennis. Yes. Garth Ennis is like this, like almost like a Tarantino. He's like super Pulp Fiction-y. He's a British dude and he's super, super graphic. And he, <laughs> his claim to fame was another FX show, which wasn't very good, but the book was awesome. The Preacher, you guys ever seen Preacher? I think I saw the pilot and it was like crazy violent. Seth Rogen yeah. and his partner uh, produced that, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's an but it's not nearly as good. The book is fucking fantastic. The book is easily like a top five comic like it's it's fantastic, but he's super super graphic. And then he took his career from that and like did a bunch of superhero things, which really isn't his cup of tea. And then he's this is a small company called Dynamite. He went to Dynamite and started The Boys and went back to what he's really good at, which is like graphic, super over the top, like violent sex, violence, heads blowing up, and it's really really good. And they they've made The Boys off of it. And I thought the first season was pretty good. I thought they kept it pretty true. Oh, so so you are through the first season, right? I saw the first season, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All right, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. So you have time to get caught up, whatever. But like I said, they'll be doing one a week, so you can join in on the fun. And it'll be interesting to see what, if any, <clears throat> of the cultural conversation will enact over social media, whatever. Or if people are, I mean, I guess, I guess you have to actually physically show up to school, right? And so I guess you have to talk to people and stuff. So maybe they might be talking about it at school. I don't have those worries. I'm quarantined. Actually, I think I saw my first Wait. person. Here's, here's something good for me. I saw my first person this entire quarantine, or at least at least since mid-March, just today. You're six feet apart. I felt fairly safe. It was fine. But Wait, you saw him like by accident? Like you went to the grocery store? Or that was no, no, no. He was in the neighborhood. He usually he lives like, you know, on like in another county. And so I was like, and I had some exciting news about the business, whatever. Figured, all right, stop by. We'll keep our distance, whatever. I'll, we'll stick ball a little bit, and it was good. It was cool. We were outdoors. Did, did you like? Did you like? Did you prop? Did you put like X's on the on the ground? And you're like, you stand there, and I'm gonna stand over here. No, you gotta do that. Was, no, he was a good seven, eight feet away. Uh, we both had masks on. Uh, it was it was legit. It was good. And actually, my mom this entire time, like she's been seeing her boyfriend damn near every day. He'll come over and he'll uh, uh, prop up in the in the backyard, like in in the lawn chair like 10 feet away, her the same, both wearing masks. So, you know, I guess it can be done, but I'm not, I'm trying to be out here in these streets. If anyone follows my, my social media knows I am very, very, very germaphobic about this bullshit. Ah, don't get me started. So this was a big step for me and at least reintroducing myself a little bit to society. We'll be doing this all the time. I'm just saying that we can do it safely. I feel safe. That's something good for me. All right, fuck it. Anyways, moving on. Uh, the other thing, the other thing I'm watching that I'm really digging is the show called Away. Uh, it, and it's just got like a really, it's really, really solid drama. You know, you know who would love this? Uh, your dad, G Nice. Don would love this. Give me a drama, Ed. Give me a drama. No, no, this <laughs> there stuff. Is, Give me a there is zero chance my father would like this. Why? <laughs> zero chance. What is it? What is the show about, Ed? All right. So it's basically, it's basically, it's a, uh, this Hillary Swank plays like this, uh, a spaceship commander in like the near future. This is not like it's like maybe five years away at, at best. It doesn't feel like it's too far off. Who's commanding a five nation endeavor to make a, the first man trip to Mars? It's like China, India, Russia, U.S., and Great Britain all have like a, a representative on on this capsule, right? And it's just and so simple enough premise. It's like a three year round trip, whatever. Um, <clears throat> the first the pilot episode is basically getting them to the moon, which is kind of like the, the launching point while they refuel to make the really long flight to Mars. And they just cut, keep throwing like real life drama in it because she leaves the family behind. She's married to Josh Charles uh, from, you know, good wife and sports night fame. He's really good as like the, as the also astronaut husband who couldn't go because like some heart thing or whatever. And, uh, and then as you can see in the still picture, the daughter, teenage daughter, I think a freshman in high school, just starting kind of Mr. Mom, all sort of stuff. And they really ramp up the, the 
the space home divide because for some reason I'm still not I don't know about how the science this works out but I guess they're able to make like cell phone calls from the spaceship for like the first three months like she's just like calling her up on a on a, a, a like on a T-Mobile shit that's going straight to her daughter's phone like outside of class I'm like okay I thought it took like 20 minutes or something to go from but they're not quite at Mars yet but still it's like there's like having instant phone calls and like back and forth conversations while she's in deep space. I'm like, okay. Additional, additional charges may apply. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? So uh, he's, uh, I won't tell you what happens to him, but he's great in his role. Something happens to him in the pilot, which definitely amps up the drama. And then also just the interplay between the crew, because you got five nations, five competing agendas. I mean, and it's not quite all like the stereotypical, oh, China's sneaky and, and India's proud. And it's not quite all that. It's, it's very much like, like embedded in the, the the DNA of the characters uh, themselves, and then I'm only through four, maybe five, I think. So I'm still kind of learning about it. It's a ten episode first season, all dropped at once on Netflix. But it's really good shit. Like these guys behind this really know their drama. I think who's it? Uh, Eric Kripke, I think, is behind this. He's done what's you know, dozens, like a dozen seasons of Supernatural and some other shit. Who else did this? Um, not too familiar with the actual creator, but like the executive producers are legit. Jason Kadams, Parenthood, Friday Night Lights. I mean, they know their drama. So it's really good. It's got space. The show makes space fun again. Sure. So, yeah. Very emotional. It was actually trending Friday night on Twitter uh, when it dropped because people weren't expecting the emotional gut punch in the pilot episode. Like they really do come for your 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 heart like an emotional cardiothoracic surgeon. It's crazy. So that's what I'm watching. What do y'all watch? What are you watching, Kevin? Uh, I am watching Lovecraft Country. Really? Uh, new show. Okay. You said still. It's only been three three episodes. I, I think maybe it's been four, unless they skipped four. Later. Maybe maybe it has been four. I, I failed. Did you tell me? I gave it three episodes and I'm out. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's, I, it's, it's I'm, every week. It's crazy. I'm not a huge horror fan, not a big genre guy per se, but I think Journey Smollett, 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 great in this. Smokey. Smollett. Smollett. And the dude that is the main dude is great, Courtney B. Vance. Acting is great. It's, I don't want to give anything away, but there's a, there's a continuing story, which if you watch the fourth episode, it gets deeper into the mythology of things. Episode three, which may have turned you off, Ed, is a bit of a standalone. <clears throat> so, so you're not sure whether it can be anthology-esque or not. But the person that I know who works on the show was sort of describing it as a horror movie if sort of the boogeyman is racism. And that right. has sort of borne itself out through the course of the show. Michael K. Williams, Courtney B. Vance, like great cast, has that, uh, what is it, 40s United 50s, States or 50s? 50s. Yeah. Uh, so like, you know, they, they have all the style. They have a lot of allusions to, there's like sort of a reimagining of this Gord, famous Gordon Parks uh, photograph that plays in the first episode, I believe. In the third episode, they've got a lot of sort of uh, what's her name? The Riveter. What's the woman's name? Rosie, Rosie, Riveter. Rosie the Riveter imagery with uh, Journey in it, and uh, it's her it's costumes, a... by the way are on point. Like there's someone's gonna win an Emmy for her. Oh, hello. <laughs> 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 this is a live uh, show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying it so far. Again, not a huge horror fan, but it, it's it's a horror show, and it's uh. The woman that brought you, it's Misha Green who brought you Underground, which Journey was also in, as oh. if I know her. Uh, and then <laughs> yeah, you've got J.J. Yeah. J. Abrams and who's the other big producer on it? Um, some other big, big name producer. But if well, you're I, I will, I will say that horror and really black folks, this is your thing. Well, and, and, and you, you mentioned the reason why I'm out is that I'm not, big on horror either the, the the best i'll go is like social thriller like you know jordan peele stuff but mm -hmm. uh and i was all aboard on this was very excited for this the reason why i'm out and i think i mentioned this 
on a previous podcast. It isn't necessarily just the horror, but the fact that it was a different show every week. I heard that it might be like anthology style. I'm definitely out on anthologies. I don't do Black Mirror. I don't do like, you know, Love on Netflix. There's a lot of anthology shows I just don't do because of the emotional work it takes every episode to learn something new, invest in people, and then to kiss them goodbye at the end of the episode. I hate doing that. So that, that's so that's a personal thing for me. And then also, uh, the second episode really is when it kind of turned me off because it seemed like, that's why I don't dabble with Harry Potter either. It's like, it seems like anytime they need to get bailed out of a situation, they, they make up some spell. They're just making oh, shit up. And it felt like they're pulling stuff out of a hat. And I got all the illusions and stuff, which is kind of cool, but it's still, I was like, what are the rules? You know me and the rules, right? What are the rules of this world? Like, ah, I can't figure yeah. it out. I hate that. And they haven't quite necessarily let us know everything that there is to know or possibly there are no rules but um <laughs> i have a feeling they're just rolling them out slowly i think though jordan peele is the other big producer on it yeah jordan peele, yeah, exactly. it. so you know it's on brand for both of them i would say well i will say this it makes me more interested to, to see underground because i never watch underground because oh it was it was another one of those i only got but so much black misery credits and, and, I, and i'm sure it's good but it's also in wgn kind of hard to find like i just didn't bother but i think but thanks there's, for reminding me about Misha because I think I will check out Underground now. Yeah, there's not a lot of there's there's more victory than there is misery in it, and uh, Aldous Hodge plays uh, sort of opposite journey, and then there's another woman I can't remember her name who's really good in it, and then Aisha, what is her name, plays uh, Harriet Tubman in one episode, and they do a whole episode, and it's just that woman playing Harriet Tubman for the entire 42 minutes. And it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. I hear they burn through a lot of plot too. That's so that's definitely not my type of show. All right. Yeah. So I'll check it out. Um, I mean, not that I'm short on shows to watch because right. for those of you who did watch last week, uh, listeners and watchers at home, we are inundated with a lot of good stuff from last week, this week, not so much in town pool last week. I mean, I'm, there's like eight things I want to watch. Charlie Kaufman movie, freaking, um, I gave 30 Minutes of Love Guarantee. That's trash. <clears throat> Bad Boy Billionaires did not come out. That made me sad. AP Bio is still on deck. I uh, did see Mulan. That was straight. Got to finish up Knots and Bio should be funnier than it is. What should be funnier? AP Bio. Like, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I want to love it, but it's sort I of think funny. like the first season better. I think second season was kind of was kind of okay. Uh, but I, I, I generally like the, it's like a hang. It's like a, it's like a, a third monitor show. I would call it. like I'll have it on this screen while I'm doing work over here. I don't have to pay t- too much attention to it. But yeah, third so, monitor. So what, what falls under second monitor show? <laughs> no, no, no. My other two monitors are filled with work. <laughs> <laughs> Working. <laughs> oh, it was less fun. <laughs> what, what, what's the new Kaufman movie that's coming out? Oh, I'm thinking of ending things. Yeah, we can, I mean, it's, and in the game last week, it did, it started off really hot. Like, it it was almost an anomaly. It was that 111 at Game Lock on Thursday. I'm like, oh, this is bizarre. How many, this many people on Google are loving Charlie Kaufman? It seemed kind of off-brand, you know? Because he's not Mm -hmm. for everybody. And then, as you can see, it kind of settled in. Like, 83, the critics were fine. You know, it's kind of heady material. But then the audiences came down to 51 on Google. 7.0 7.0 on IMDb, which actually is a little higher than I thought it would be. So 88.65. And for its salary, which is in the 10,000s, I mean, not bad. But the 111 did catch me by surprise at first because it could not sustain that kind of lead. But, yeah, and I'm not even, even exactly sure what it's about. And oh, Wrong one. And I don't even care. I just know if Charlie Kaufman has a new out that's written or filmed, I'm going to watch it. Uh, Jesse Plemons, Jesse Buckley. Tony Collette, yeah, let's let's ride. <laughs> and it's a series or it's a it's a film. It's a film. Uh-huh. Yeah, very look, you know, weird, you know, design at the core. Yeah, I'm I'm all about that. All right, anyways, um, any, any other title you want to throw out there that you're watching, KG? One other thing that I'm watching, which I'm sure you'll be watching soon, unless the the last season threw you off, is Power Book Two: Ghost. Ah, I am all over that. How much did you, have you seen? Have you seen like screeners or something? Or the the premiere was uh Sunday night. Yeah, okay. I, I just saw the premiere too, and yeah, I thought I they saw. did an excellent job. I thought that was they, great. There is so much if you thought there was a lot going on on power, <laughs> there's <laughs> more going on in book two. You got the Mary J. Blige as sort of the queen pin, ice yeah. ice hearted, cold blooded queen pin. 
you've got the actor, I'm not sure his name, who played Bobby Brown in the new edition thing on BET. He oh, shit, that's him. That is I'm him. Trying to figure out his name. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo. I don't yeah, know I his name, but he is. He you know, is I never watched that. that. It, it was really good. I was. I was. Doesn't make you any more pure, G Nice. <laughs> Wait, stood, the Bobby Brown thing was really good. The the, like the I didn't see the Bobby Brown one, but the new edition one. Yeah, no, the new edition was the greatest. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous. Like it was absurd. It was absolutely absurd, <laughs> but it was wonderful. It was so good and terrible at the same time. Lavelle like, Adams. Is that him? No. no, that's not him. No, no, that's, that's not else. him. Uh, but but yeah, you got your boy. Um, uh, Tariq, who's you know trying to go to college so he can get the money that his father left him. You've that got boy Met- that he's running. He is running the entire episode. <laughs> he was running the whole time. You he got Method cool. Man, who's uh, who's uh, I've left seen him. the after this. It looks like Method Man has like character death. Is that is that? Yeah, true? he's. I was gonna say he's left all of his Wu Tang. Swag on the side, and he's playing he like a, a, a real lawyer. Like, lawyer, he plays a lawyer. His diction is on point. <laughs> <laughs> like if you didn't know his history, you would be like, "Oh, his, you know, this is just like a regular." Yeah, he's like actor. an actor. He's yeah. like I see now. But but the cool thing about Method Man's character, though, because not only just because he's Method Man and you know and Clifford Smith's from them streets, you can tell he's got a bit of an edge to him. Like, he's got like this kind of like. Like I may be, you know, suited and booted right now, but I'm pretty sure down the line we're gonna find out that you know <laughs> that this yeah. lawyer wasn't always a lawyer. Like he d- either did or does grimy shit, or is down for some grimy shit. <laughs> yeah, this this will definitely be. What do you closer mean, to, This will be closer to cheese than it was to his role in How High. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This yeah. kid. This kid is really good. Yeah, I he's enjoy, good. Enjoy him. <laughs> all right good shit what about you g nice and don't tell me oh i'm a dad and i work and i have no time you must watch something no well i I'm not, I'm not, i won't say that but what i will say is we have gotten into this horrible place of it's not even there's there's a lot of good stuff it's not their fault it's our fault but we like have gotten to this place where like we can't concentrate like it really has to be something spectacular in order for me to like actually watch like i've watched a bunch of stuff but like i haven't been like super excited about it so like for example i've been watching the the new the jason sudeikis ted oh, lasso! Lasso. <laughs> yes. let's talk ted lasso please I'm, I'm not finished though so don't fuck it up somebody well, just somebody I'm just put me on to this i just watched the commercial, yeah, the I, I commercial. Think, well, i'm in the middle of like the third one it's okay. funny. It's super charming. It's funny. It's no, a little no, no, no. slow. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you now. I now I watched the first three. I was out. I was totally out. It's chuckle funny, but not like funny funny. I was totally out. There is a leap, and some people have debated me in this in, in our little uh, entertainment Slack thing. But I contend there is a leap in quality from the third episode to the fourth episode. The fourth episode. I'm not saying it's like they rebooted the whole thing, but the the level of comedy and writing is so much better in the fourth episode. It's written by Jamie Lee. She played like the love interest, I think, on one of those seasons on Crashing, that Pete Holmes comedian uh, comedy drama thing or whatever. And it is so good in that fourth episode. And they take that and run with it. The next three episodes are excellent. So you're in for a treat. I've enjoyed it. Look, I've enjoyed it. There's a little bit of like, wait, why would you hire the coach who doesn't know soccer? There's a little bit of that, right? <laughs> it's yeah, a major league, major league, but for soccer. <laughs> yeah, but it's so different, dude. It's not like, like, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, it's he's written, like, I think Jason Sudeikis is, like, legitimately funny. Everything he does, he does, he's very, there are certain comedian, comedic actors who can just make it look natural. Yeah. Like, if you watch it for years on Saturday Night Live, a lot of those guys are funny, but they're like, I am acting now. But he has <laughs> always been, like, I'm just doing shit that's funny because I'm a goofy dude. So I've been watching that. Um, my wife, we watched it together, and she quickly said she's done. That was after. Tell, tell, tell Re one more. Just one more. It's half hour of her life. I promise. I'm not her shit, but okay. One uh, more. One more. <laughs> we watched, um, like, we've been watching. I, I started watching this after you talked about it, Ed. I, I, I've been watching P Valley. Yeah, oh. baby. But Woo! I. I don't know if it's good. Whoa, 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 I just whoa, watched whoa, the pilot. Whoa. And you want to get out of this conference call right now? 
shit. This shit's incredible. This this has the most. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's incredible, dude. It's 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 entertaining. Uh, yeah, all right. Kevin, I, I, help I, me out here. I know you're watching P Valley, right? Oh, I Kevin, just say what I said. Watch. Yes, I just watched the pilot. We watched the pilot last night, the night before. I'll give it one thing. It's not subtle. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, ridiculous is certainly a word that comes to mind. Uh, and again, we're only one episode in. Uh, like it's... they do everything, and then they turn it up to ten. Like. She's breastfeeding in between, like yeah, doing sets yeah. on stage. Yeah. Like Kevin, Kevin, that pilot. You I you can, when, when you get down to Chuck Alisa, you come to here. <laughs> if you thought that pilot was busy, and actually it's funny, someone actually gave me notes uh, this week that my alt X pilot was a little too busy. I'm like, that's the type of show that I like to watch. What the fuck are you talking about? No, it gets even busier. It is, and, and, and from the end, the way they that's, film, like the, the the pole dancing, like sports, I mean, better than sports. Uh-huh. These, I'm telling you, by the time you're finished with this eight episode first season, I, I'll be you'll be hard pressed to find any better athletic performances ever. I've never I don't, seen I don't like disagree it. with it's that. Like, it's, it's the storytelling. And they show a bunch of nudity, which is exciting. No, no, I'm telling you, like, keep watching. It gets cr- they, the shit they do on these polls is fucking ridiculous. So I I I did this. I will say this. I looked up uh Mercedes. Sorry. The character Mercedes oh, and her okay. story. Her story is entertaining. Apparently, she was a teacher in real and life. Evans, the actor, the lady, yeah, whatever. Her okay. name. Apparently, she was a teacher, and then, like, in the middle of her first year, <laughs> she randomly got a callback for something, and she was like, "I'm out." No, no, no the department <laughs> chair. She left <laughs> tenure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrote a resignation. Yeah, that was oh, on vacation. I, was like, hey, wow. I ain't going back. <laughs> what, what's that? A Harlem Nights? Yeah. You know what, honey? I ain't coming home again. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. She can't go back in the classroom after this, though. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> that's gonna be a hard sell. Yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's gonna be a hard sell <laughs> because as annoying as my model pictures are, this she's got the next step. <laughs> yeah, no, P Valley is great. I'm glad you're, you're enjoying. How far are you in P Valley? I don't know, like four or five. You also know the other ladies from Harry Potter. That's this is like that. I felt all creepy because Harry Potter, the the lead ladies from Harry Potter. In in, in what in P Valley? Yeah, the lead lady. Oh, hold, 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 hold. You mean Alerica Johnson? I mean, yeah, she's like Harry Potter, dude. You gotta like, that's the thing. That's why, know, that's why I know I'm not paying it's attention. Not a... When I start researching the actresses and actors, I know I stop listening. Well, no, no, no. Well, the thing is, remember I said I'm out on Harry Potter. I think I bailed after like the third the third uh, movie or whatever. So I, I, I had no idea she was in Harry Potter. All that's I knew was that British. she was British. And that she, and once British. again, another Brit nailing an American accent like it's nothing. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. How come? Uh, yeah, I where is this supposed to take place? Like, it's just somewhere in the Chuck- Delta. Lisa, Chuck Lisa, Mississippi, Mississippi Delta, Mississippi Delta. Okay. Originally, I thought the show was supposed to be in a, an Atlanta thing, and then well, they film in Atlanta. Yeah, they do a lot of stuff. They do a lot of like. There's a lot of subtlety stuff, which is kind of interesting. What but it's on also, which show? It's also <laughs> kind of there is subtlety? there is subtlety coming. I promise you, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> it's a little, but it's a little absurd. It's like what Did that just happened. Contorno was just trying to get a pilot sold. Leave her alone. The pilot. I, I, listen, I'm I'm all for people working. God bless. Good night. But that show is. So so I've, I've been watching that. And then the last thing I've been watching again. This is all like this is going to sound terrible, but this is all like while you wash dishes, and that's not an insult. It's just like that's where my brain is. Mm-hmm. And so I was watching something else that's on Stars, uh, the High High Tide High Tower. Oh, High, high Town. Tower. High the high tone, yeah. yeah. That is also ridiculous. That's pretty ridiculous, yeah. I, I enjoyed it, but it's totally ridiculous. I forced myself to the end. Uh, although I was very impressed with the stripper actress. She's I great. thought she did a really nice job. I thought she did a good job of like, like being like sexy stripper lady and then like normal person. I thought she had skill. She, she, she's really she's ridiculous. She was pretty much over the top. She used to be in uh, again. I spent time everything. Reading. Yeah, she was in Talk to Me. That's the yeah, funniest. Part. I remember that. That's when I first saw her at Monica Raymond, and I've seen her like <laughs> guest Yeah, everywhere, everywhere else. You know, I I liked it. I'm back for season two. It's been renewed for season two. If we ever get to it. It. James Badge Dale, great scumbag. 
Love it. <laughs> just love it. Yeah. He, I mean, he kind of, I mean, he has that whole kind of mass hole attitude without like overdoing the accent. So I, I, I like him. He, he's good in this. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's ridiculous, but I, I enjoyed it too. So I'm glad you're discovering that stars. Stars got a, a sneaky deep bench, honestly. Like, uh, I mean, they've got a outlander. I've never planned. I'm not sure I shared that with you guys when I was going through my five, or six season Outlander run. I mean, I plowed through that sucker, boy. Yikes! Woo. I also saw speaking of stars. I also saw uh, blood, blood, whatever the Vin Diesel thing on there was. Oh, blood, uh, shot. What? Bloodshot. Yeah. Big okay, the last movie I saw in a theater when the Rona was you saw that in the theater. On an wow. IMAX, and I felt so uncomfortable the entire That's time because awesome. I was never more aware of all the touch points at a fucking movie theater than I was when I went that <laughs> Thursday night with coronavirus raging around the nation, especially here as, as a hotspot. It was just nuts. I'm like, I ain't never going to a movie again unless it's figured out. I, so. That there is a really horrible movie that's also awesome at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> all right, well, good shit. Let's move along to our. Oh, we just did an hour of intro. That's awesome. <laughs> the other thing that you may want to check out, people, is if you haven't seen the trailer to Dune, the new. Oh, Dune, that was good. Yeah, looks amazing. You guys see the trailer to Batman? I did. Yeah. I was like, whatever. It makes me do. Batman's yeah. a cop. Whatever. <laughs> no more copaganda. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, yeah, dude, no, the Dune looked good. I mean, it, it's, it's Denny Villeneuve. I mean, it's gonna look good. It's gonna sound good. I'm it, I'm curious to see how it compares to the original. As far as I saw the original out when I was a kid, probably should have yeah. seen it that young. Kind of messed with me a little bit, but I do think I read the book, so I might have been prepared for it. But uh, mm -hmm. I just remember it being like very moody and broody, a little scary with the whole worms in, in the sand and shit. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I enjoy that trailer. Very, very stylish, which is what you'd expect from Denis at this point. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, the main topic of this episode tonight is top three alt history movies. And the way it works is you name a movie with a revisionist history of real events. We alternate picks. When someone picks that movie, that movie is out of play. And since, you know, we're going... Oh, God, it's here in the script, too. Oh, why did I do this? All right, fuck, fuck it. We'll do it. Surprise! G-Nice, you have to go first for a change. As if, <laughs> as if you studied or are even prepared. Well, listen here, friends. I am ready because I researched. Um, I will say this. The, this. This topic is is there is room for gray. So... <laughs> there it is. Hey, so do you live <laughs> so, in the gray area? Well, I'm going to start off with the obvious one because I, I actually enjoyed this movie very much. Um, right. I'm going to start with the obvious one, so you have to take it off your list. Uh, but um, Inglorious Bastards. There it is. Yep. Yep. You get, you got, it's obvious. Obviously, I know that. But it's what it like. I remember watching that movie and to, like, look, Tarantino is awesome in so many ways, and he's also maybe a horrible person in so many ways. And like, <laughs> His movies, sometimes they're so good and sometimes they're like, eh. And this is one of the ones where I was like, I was at the point of like fatigue with him. And then when I saw it, I remember being like, this shit is really fucking good. And then I remember thinking like getting all the way to when he was, I didn't realize that this was like a made, like I thought this was just like, I don't know, some, when they actually shot Hitler, I was like, wait, what? what movie is this? Oh, you're making this all up. Like, I remember thinking that moment, this is just, it was clever. It was smart. It was like, bunch of weird shit happened that whole long ass scene with the cream and the milk at the beginning and then there's the other great scene where he's doing the pie he's so good at taking some tiny detail that's like mundane and turning it into some weird like almost creepy but all but like wasn't even like the you know he's known for like that great dialogue it wasn't like that dialogue was fantastic or anything but it was really 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 good scene work um and everybody involved was really good no, agreed. And yeah, that was top of my list. So way to play the game, G Nice. Way to there play you the go. Game. There you go. See, you let me go first. I I have a list of the obvious ones that I know you guys have, and then I have the good ones. <laughs> Pure G Nice slander as usual. Um, <laughs> do you have any thoughts on Glorious Bastards, Kevin, or do you want to get into your pick? I thought it was uh, very well made, very well done. When they, I this is the movie that actually sort of put me 
over the top on Tarantino, and I've sort of he's great, by the way. Yeah, he's he, sort of gone downhill in my eyes since, and specifically because oh. of the change of history at the end, sort of took me out of it. Oh, um, really? Okay. But you know, wait the the fact that he shot him at the end took you. Yeah, out it was of like it? this is like it was weird. The that fact and the fact that you had these two storylines that just almost kissed and then didn't. They didn't affect each other. That also took me out at the end, but it's a perfect pick for this specific exercise. See, I hated him prior to this. Really? <laughs> this, this actually made me like him better because I was like, oh, this is a good movie. Like, <laughs> As opposed to... <laughs> well, but like, I don't know, but when we got to the Kill Bills, by the time we got the second Kill Bill and they like slashed people's bodies and all the blood sprayed, I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> but, like, but like this brought me back to like, oh, here's the story. There's a cool story. It's interesting. I mean, it's totally over the top, but it is like that's some creative shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even the fact that <clears throat> that he gives a bit of, I don't know, what, what is it? A fan service at the end by blowing up, you know, history's you know biggest villain. I mean, I yeah, it was like a weird wet dream. It was like this like yeah. strange yeah. But I remember that I did not know that going in. I thought this was just going to be like some weird attempt at his life and then end with like these people dead. And then they killed them. And I was like, oh, oh, I, oh okay. This is not the movie I thought it was. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, well good, good. Good first pick. Good first pick. Um, what, uh, what, what do you got, uh, Kevin? Again, this was a very difficult category. <laughs> I also may be in the very much in the gray areas once we get to our later picks. But for now, I will start with another obvious one, which is. X Men First Class. Damn, oh, you can't do superheroes. We we can't do superheroes. We can't do superheroes. No, no, no. You, you you can't you can't in so much as this actually deals with going back into history and changing it. Yes. Did you see the movie, Greg? I mean, uh, <laughs> Gene Nicest. Listen, 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 listen. I will judge Sorry, something. Sorry, Fox. Don't deal with facts before, here. But I have seen this one. <laughs> yeah, but you, they obviously they go back and they're affecting. Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah, they have war in this movie. Did you know that? No, you did not. Boom. That uh, It doesn't matter. I still get this pick in, and my later <laughs> ones will not work. So, <laughs> chalk one up on the board for me. No, that's, that's smart, class. and I agree. It totally qualifies. It's on my list. Not that it qualifies just because it's on my list, but no, it, it qualifies. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, I, and that actually, I mean, that was like the reboot, right? That's when they tried doing the younger class mm -hmm. it's like their first time their first outing together and it really worked and it even made some money if i recall correctly so. i thought um they did really good casting for the white queen i remember thinking that at the time being like yep she's perfect for it um mm -hmm. i these mm -hmm. movies got the 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 more the x-men movies they make the less i like them yeah apocalypse <laughs> was terrible I, I barely remember that movie like x-men one and x-men two was awesome and now yeah. i'm just kind of like eh. Is uh, is Kevin Feige going to get his hands on any of these? Is my is there, is there, is there, is right, there's like some sort of there's some sort of publishing issue or some shit? Yeah, but I know he's coming over to help with uh, Spider Man. Yes. No, he's he's helping with everything. He's got Star Wars too. He's got the MCU. I mean, he's got everything. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, uh, I wish we could clone him, but yeah, he's gonna be busy, or he has been busy, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good shit. Um, my first pick, as I cross off two of the most obvious ones on this <laughs> list. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna do an I'm gonna do an uh, obvious one too from uh, from uh, our favorite director already mentioned. Once upon a time in Hollywood. There you go. And, and it's revision. Have you seen this, G Nice? Yeah. Yes, I have. I'm. 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 In my brain, I have not decided if this counts yet. But yes, I have. Seen, I have seen it. Well, I, the first. I mean, I think a lot of people had the same reaction I did the first time, where, <clears throat> where I thought it was. I thought it was solid. It was like a good hang. It was. It was. It was good. Three out of four reels, right? But people were like raving about it. Is all as deep as this is that? And I'm like, calm down. It was a good time to movies. It wasn't all that. And then. I, it's, I sat with it for a while. I made my, I sat mom down one time to watch it, and I realized that this thing is a fucking comedy. It's great. 
it's fun. It's it's a really good hang, and it definitely appreciates upon further viewings. Once you once you realize that you're just coming for to hang out with, with these guys, it, it's not going to be a whole lot of plot. You're not going to get like a whole lot of you know of development in 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 ways you thought was going to happen. You know, the following Sharon Tate all day and what turns out to be not her last day. You know, was just like. I mean, it was a slice of life in the '60s, and once you're once you're mentally prepared to, to go into the, the movie with that, it's it's a it's a really good movie. Like I really enjoyed it. I would bump it up another half reel if I did half reel. So yeah, it's it's really good. Spot some weird memes too. The whole uh, the whole uh, thing where he's sitting down, pointing. How? I mean, explain explain the kids to me, G Nice. How's that a meme? Uh, Leo pointing at a screen is all of a sudden a meme. I, I don't get it, but yeah. Uh, and then, and then Brad Pitt doing his Brad Pitt thing, uh, being weirdly, and then yeah, just throwing Damian, uh, Damian Lewis in there for like a day's work. Uh, that's just weird, but whatever. <laughs> he, the, was, he was what's his name? He was um, Steve McQueen. Yeah, yeah. I think we talked about this uh, once before. Oh. I, I I remember thinking this movie was really, 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 really slow and annoying, and then the last ten minutes were awesome. <laughs> and, and, and conversely, I thought I, I did think that it was kind of slow, a bit of a hang, whatever. The last ten minutes, I thought were was just basically Tarantino uh, regressing to the mean because that's what he likes to do. He likes to chop shit up, blow shit up, whatever. And it's fine. Some of it are parts that are darkly comedic. I just thought like we didn't need all that blood and guts per se. Like it's a little too much. Kind of like how Spike Lee doesn't know how to end the film and just kind of <laughs> resorts to violence. That was Tarantino doing his thing. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's my yeah. film. Any any thoughts on that, Kevin? You good? Uh, I tried to watch it on a plane, fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> there you this go. Whole thing, this whole this this bit in particular, where he's like doing his the scene, that mm -hmm. I thought was like, I, what? Like it was just extra. <laughs> I thought she was great. Nice. She was yeah, she was, yeah, she she looked good. She she looks like she is a child of the sixties. I mean, it worked. I don't know. But yeah, so yes, this one, and because of the whole Sharon Tate thing and the and the the supposed Manson murders being turned on its head, that's what qualifies it for. Yeah, 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 yeah. All it's right, your it's your game. It's your game. What, what? What? How does that not qualify? Don't even don't even give me that. Totally. I've heard it. History. It's not. Yeah, yeah. It's your game. Win. <laughs> Fine. Next pick. Your number two film. Second. All right. Film. It's my turn. Yes. Yes. All right. Another classic. Obvious ish, but it's not obvious. It's, it's Groundhog Day. Boom. <laughs> huh? Oh, dude, you said rewriting history. It's Wait, what? Rewrites history. Booyah, great. <laughs> this just makes sense for me. How does it rewrite history? He's in a loop. That's different. Yeah, because, because, because the history does not exist. He has to do it over and over and over again. Oh, my God. Are you for real? <laughs> this is not. I, I mean, is there is there a part of Groundhog Day I've forgotten where it links to some like real life event besides a generic Groundhog Day in the nineties? Am I missing something here? The, no, but this is a very difficult. Keep in mind, this is a very in defense of G Nice. This is a very difficult category. <laughs> I can't. I can't like, you can't even go with three. Come on. <laughs> I got more, but I, that's my favorite movie. That's a great movie. Go, great go, movie. Go, go back, go back to the shed. Come out with something better. Are you serious? I'm dead. Fine. Serious. Go around, go around, go around. Uh, All right, Kevin, what's your next film? My next film, uh, <laughs> possibly it's it's. This is on the on the uh, border here. I was <laughs> although I have two on here that are legitimate, but I'm going to go with this one first. It is yeah, a movie right. called. Monty Python's The Life of Brian. Huh, okay, I have not seen this. What's it about? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this mo this is movie is about it's like it's the life of British people. It's the life of Brian. It is <laughs> Brian who is a guy who is said to be a prophet at the same time as Jesus is going through his life. Oh. But the there are bits it's these people are following Brian on his journey to like become the messiah or whatever as jesus is doing his jesus life so it's like oh, <laughs> a little bit of a retelling of the jesus story but from like 
it's like Jesus is sort of the sideline in the background happening and Brian's life is happening as well. And there's musicals in it. There's musical numbers, typical Monty Python shenanigans. Uh, it's a good thing yeah, you haven't seen this really movie because you might not accept it. So it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I mean, it sounds like it's a bit of a farce, but Jesus, look, you know, whether you believe Jesus had magical, mystical, spiritual powers or whatever, he was a real person. He's a real dude. He's actually part of official history. So yes. uh, it, this qualifies. This totally qualifies. Because instead of that making qualifies this, in the exact same way the ground does. <laughs> no, it, no, it does Very not. Proud of you, Kevin. Good job. <laughs> not too nice. All right. So do you do you want to do your your second pick or do no? I'll pick? wait. I'll wait. I'm curious what you're about to say. <laughs> oh God. All right. You guys I got have backups. I'm good. I hope so. Shit. Um, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this movie called uh, Yesterday, and basically it imagines. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, it's what happens if. And it sounds like you guys have seen this film, or you know about this film. I know but, about it. But it, it was a cool film. I enjoyed. It. I thought it. I think the, the the release timing was bad. It's basically a glorified indie that got released as kind of like a counter summer. Uh, programming film. It came out like in May or something. It, it totally has like a fall vibe. Basically, this dude right here, Himish Patel, I think this might have been his first major role. Definitely his first major kind of US facing role. And he plays a uh, struggling song, uh, singer songwriter named Jack, who I guess hits his head or gets hit by a bus or something, wakes up and gets hit by a bus on his bike. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. He's hit, hit on, his, on a bus by his, on his bike and basically he wakes up to an alternate. Uh, reality where the Beatles never existed, or, or they exist, but they were just people. They weren't famous, and he still has all the knowledge of the Beatles songs in his head. And he basically, he basically Billy Vanilli's that shit to fame and fortune, <laughs> and watch his entire life situation change. Because at the time he's like struggling, he's got a job he doesn't quite like. He's got uh, his best friend who he may or may not be in love with, whatever. And then he starts singing all these covers of Beatles songs, but people think that they're his songs. And so you have like an alt history Ed Sheehan, who's still Ed Sheehan, but you know he helps put him on as like you know this new found singer guy with all these great songs like Yesterday and like uh, Yellow Submarine and all this shit. And people and this many people come to hear, out to hear Jack use this work of these stolen songs. And I thought it was a really kind of cool tie-in to to the actual living Beatles, uh, where there's a third act thing that happens where we kind of acknowledge they exist, they're still in this world. And I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, I thought it was cute. I don't know, what do you, you think, G-Nice? Uh, this was the very first movie we saw when we moved out here at the local theater, which is this tiny, tiny theater that I'm not kidding when I said this, we went to the theater at the arranged time and they said, well, they're still finishing up in that theater. Just chill out for a minute. We'll start as soon as they get out. <laughs> hey, support <laughs> independent theaters, yo. <laughs> I was like, where, where do we live? Anyway, um, you I thought it was a township, right? <laughs> no, it's just it's just a town. Uh, we um, we had like a this. I thought it was a clever idea, and I thought it was sort of charming for like the first third, and then I thought it just got like this. Then they had to like fit, this was like. This was like Wedding Crasher, like a really fun idea for about 40 minutes. And then they had to finish it with a plot. And that fucked it all up. You know, that's actually kind of fair. Because as you remember, like the, the last act being kind of like, they try to shoehorn some morality into it. And I'm like, we really don't need all that? No, but it's really good. <laughs> this, is, this, is, um, this is the dude, the, the Irish dude who did. Um, oh. oh, it's Danny Boyle. Danny Boyle, Boyle. Yeah, Danny Boyle, yeah. yeah. He's always got like a ton of heart in his shit, which is it's it's charming, but it's like and the romance was annoying. The 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 but I love Lily James. She's oh she's adorable. I love Lily James. This is one of those moments though where it's like two people should obviously be together, so we have to come up with reasons why they can't be. That that, that did feel pretty contrived. You're right. Well, look, I'm not standing it for like a perfect film. For the purposes of this contest, yesterday, that's my second pick. It's a solid, just... solid movie that I never have to see again. <laughs> All right, Gina, snake style. What are your second and third picks? All right, I will pick a more obvious one to fulfill this this obligation I have to this game. <laughs> wow, it's ridiculous. Um, okay, so my choice is Groundhog Day. No, my choice is um, <laughs> this is an obvious one, but my this is White Man's Burden. Damn it! 
All right. I knew it was on your list. (laughs) Well played. Um, I thought this movie was fascinating. I will say that I didn't think it was very good. But I thought it was really, like, I thought it was an interesting attempt to sort of flip. And to me, it showed just how difficult it is to flip that. When people say, like, even the conversation of, like, let's reverse racism. Like, this was kind of, like, I remember there was one scene where they're dipping ketchup, their fries in mayonnaise. Do you guys remember this scene? I didn't um, see this movie. Not really. And it was like, <laughs> well, it's stupid. But it was like, we were trying to show, like, a subtlety that something... I guess the parallel was supposed to be like, I don't know, something equivalent to like a hot sauce in the black community kind of thing. And it was just like weird. And it was just like, huh? <laughs> and it was supposed to be like, but it was, you know, it was like, it was like this thoughtful attempt that just kind of was hollow. And when Harry Belafonte is like running through the neighborhood for his life, it just, the whole thing was, it was interesting. It was almost like an experiment, but it wasn't like, in terms of like a good movie, I wouldn't say it's a good movie, but I do think it was like, all right, What's the plot of this movie? Oh, uh, basically, um, uh, basically, it's a an, al- an alternate universe where, or alternate history, alternate history, alternate universe, whatever. Basically, uh, black people are in power, white people are kind of like the underclass. But the social and economic roles have been reversed, and they try to reverse like across the board, and it just it shows just how complicated that is to do. Yeah, in an alternative America where African Americans and white Americans have reversed cultural roles, a white factory worker, Travolta, kidnaps a black factory owner, Belafonte, over dismissing him, over perceived disdain. I honestly did not remember what the plot was about this. I remember yeah, seeing that makes it sound theater. way better than it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, 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 that's a good pick. I mean, you know, in, in a game where the pickings might be somewhat slim, uh, that's, that's a solid pick. It was on my list. I got four more. Well, you only need one more. So, what's your next one? <laughs> Am I, I'm not next, or I go again? Go yeah, again. Yes, next style, go for it. Okay, this is obvious, this is my obvious, and this is just ridiculous, but I love it so much. Red Dawn, motherfuckers. Oh! Okay. <laughs> That's a great the game. original, the original, please. You guys know that, I remember watching this as a kid, this and not a- questioning for one second when the Russians are coming from the sky. <laughs> Just never, never, never once thought that was weird. Like, oh, okay. there's some Russians coming from the sky in parachutes. If you watch it now, the race relations in this movie make no sense whatsoever. Well, it was Russians and Koreans, wasn't it? Wasn't it like no? Russians? It was like Middle East. I, I don't. They, no, no. There was an, there was an Asian element. I'm not sure if it was China, China, but it was. Uh, I got. I gotta remember this. I, I can't get this wrong. It, it was. It was the Russians paired with like an Asian com- uh, country, which invaded the U.S. And that, that that shit, I thought was. I thought it was a brilliant idea. I was kind of freaked out about it. Like I don't think I saw it in theaters, or if I did, I was kind of scared. Or they came down and took over, like. The, Denver. The first, it was like first, Denver or something. First place you're gonna stop is you're gonna you're gonna stop them in West Virginia. No, like, I thought, oh, I thought they, they started in, in in like Seattle. I thought they took over like like the like the, the Pacific Northwest first, didn't they? I, That's I, what I freaked me out. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember, but it's awesome. And I remember, I, I remember as a kid just being like the move, the football team saves the world, and like like they get. But you can't. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. I, I take that back. I, I got the two confused. The, the new one, the updated one, had North Korea and so. And, um, yeah, I was gonna say this was even weirder. This is like the Russians. This was Russians, Russians and Cubans. Yeah. Yeah. Russians. And you never see. It's totally ridiculous, but it's so good. It's so good. It's so horrible at the same time. Super 80s. Very. Super 80s. 80s. I yeah. thought this took yeah. place in Denver, in in Colorado. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got confused. The, the sequel must have been Pacific Northwest. This one was like, yeah, Colorado. Okay. And look how many stars. Look how, yeah, look at the cast. I mean, you got Dirty Dancing in there. You Charlie, got, Charlie, sh- shit, wow. You got the entire Outsiders crew in there. You got uh, Back to the Future in there. I mean, they, and they, they like, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember how they get all those guns, but they like are blowing shit up. And, it's like, Colorado. What? He's got a he's got a Andy. missile launcher thing there. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. Look at look at Andy. Andy. Look how hard she looks. Dude, it's awesome. Yeah, Jennifer Gray. Yeah, looking. Yeah, prime. He said nobody puts baby in a corner. Look at that shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good shit. Uh, you have any other thoughts on this one, KG? Classic movie, classic Swayze. This is this is to me peak Swayze. Sorry, yes. I said it. Not Roadhouse, Red Dawn. Not no, Roadhouse. Not like he's, a he's ghost, this, but oh, he's pretty great in Outsiders. 
outside this is yeah yeah outsiders is pretty great but this is like this this outsiders was super legit movie but swayze has a cheesiness factor which this sort of embodies which makes it more peak Swayze. Look at there, look at that. These are these dudes. This is like perfect eighties, right? This is like young yeah. people saving the world. If they is could that, have, if they were on bikes, this would be like a Steven Spielberg flick. Is that C. Thomas <laughs> Howell? No, that's not C. That Thomas. is yeah. C. Thomas Howell. Yes. Man, this is classic. You know, the whole cast of the outsiders in this piece. Yes. Good shit. Good shit. All right. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, what's your what's your final? Uh, flick? What should I do here? I I gotta go. There's a movie that I haven't seen that I that is a classic that everyone loves, but I won't do that one. I'm gonna do another Wait, one. Please do a movie you have not seen. That's even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm going to go with Oliver Stone's JFK. Oh, okay. That's an interesting interpretation, but I'll allow it. The the master of conspiracy oh. theories. I don't know if anyone saw him recently on Bill Maher's show. But he was. I, I, I've, I've quit Bill Maher. That's been my New Year's resolution myself. Really? He's fucking turned the corner, and he's just toxic. I can't stand. Him. He is toxic, but he has great guests, which is the only reason I watch him. Even if I agree with him, I would still disagree with him because he's such an ass. But he had uh, Stone on, and Stone was speaking rationally for about five minutes, and then he started <laughs> going off into some crazy conspiracy theories about all this and that or whatever because he's got a new book out about. Uh, the making of one of his early movies. Anyway, JFK, does it have historical fact? Absolutely. Does it have a lot of historical fiction? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> as well. Uh, so that's, that's uh, this was a difficult <laughs> category. That John Candy scene where he's like sweating and talking past the shit, that's like a great scene. Uh, he, what do you know about Eddie O? Tommy Lee Jones in this. Like he, he delves into every nook and cranny of every possible ridiculous uh, theory. Clearly, Kennedy was not shot by one person, uh, but but Stone throws so many theories at you and all sorts of shenanigans that you don't even know what's what. Uh, JFK, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this movie. I did it's too. not an easy movie to watch, and it's kind of ridiculous. But I think Steve told me years ago that he would... Yes, Oliver Stone. He would be Steven Espinosa now head of Showtime Entertainment. Go ahead. Golden Boy. You would say that uh, that well, like, no, no, he, he was he was an actual actor in the talent pool one of these weeks because because he had some uh, uh, documentary up on Showtime Showtime Sports and they didn't, they didn't have enough actors in it so I just threw his name up and gave him a shout out <laughs> to the entire <laughs> podcast that he'll never hear or know. So yeah, <laughs> Steve David Wingate. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying that he met, he he was telling me that uh, Oliver Stone would like edit all his stuff like after Coke and he would you would make it. It's just like his his method it was just like <laughs> always naked. He would cut all his shit naked. Well, was he a client of Steve's? And and for people who really don't know, Steven Espinoza was our lawyer once upon a time when we were working writers in Hollywood. Shout out Steven Espinoza, shout out Golden Boy, shout out. Showtime Entertainment. All right, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so too much. Um, the uh, anyway, whatever. This <laughs> so, some some plot. When you guys watch this, we like every time I see Tommy Lee Jones, like <laughs> I, I, I ask myself, do I think he's good? He gets a lot of roles, and oh, just wow. like in this, just like in this movie, and and um, I, I like he reminds me of like Two Face all the time. Remember when he was Two Face in Batman mm -hmm. Four? Just kind of like over the top. He's over the top a lot. So I'm trying yeah. to think of like, like he was fantastic in The Fugitive. Yes. He was fantastic in Old Man. No. No Country for Old Men. Yes. But then I'm not sure what else. Men in Black, the first one. Yeah. He's a little over the top though, right? Like he's just like. But that, but that was sort of the style of it. It's, it's allowable. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. But I just like whenever he's in stuff now, I, I, I'm, that doesn't excite me. Doesn't I'm not like, no, he's. he's he can deliver a line. He knows how to I do it. The client. He wasn't over the top in the client. Well, here's the thing with a lot of these guys. When you get, and, it, and it's, you know, Denzel, it's a lot of people. It's definitely Pacino. You get good, <laughs> you get famous for a thing, and then you keep doing that thing, and then it's almost like you're just doing it several different dirty. versions of the thing. 
Sure, but, but but like you're saying he got famous for Two Face, like, like no, I'm not saying that. Like Pacino has the you know what is it the Hua. yeah that was from what a scent of a woman yeah but, I don't know man I mean I I mean it I think what you a lot of mistakes right where what you interpret for as like over the top is just kind of like baked in into his style. It's like saying, oh, every time Denzel does, uh, you know, uh, does one of his Denzel-isms or, or, or every time, you know, uh, uh, Tommy Lee Jones does his little gruff Texan accent type thing, you know, leans into it. It's like, a, it's almost like a parody of itself. I just think that's the style. I mean. Nah, uh, man, look, look at, look at, look at, um, you just passed it. What's the one where he's the warden? Um, the Tarantino movie, he's the warden. Uh, He's grabbing people by the nose with the nose clippers. You just passed it. Tarantino yeah. movie? Yeah, it wasn't in. It was. I just saw it on your list. Oh, you're moving too fast. That kills my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll. Uh, he was good in that movie too. He was good in. Um, you just passed it again. I'll be right back. All right. Uh, Stormy Month. No, Stranger in My Land. No, Big Town. Uh, Tarantino movie. I don't remember Tarantino. Yeah, he's in that movie uh, with um, Robert Downey Jr. The, uh, the Natural Born Killers. Tarantino did Natural Born Killers. Wasn't he the warden in Natural Born Killers? Yeah, I think he's the warden. No, Tarantino. Tarantino did not direct Natural Born Killers. Oliver Stone. Tarantino God. wrote Natural Born Killers. God, you're messing me up with that. I'm like, what? Huh? Okay, yeah, Natural Born Killers. Um, Tommy I don't remember the warden. He's like the okay. over the top warden. All right, fair. I just like he's good. I don't mean to say he's not good. I always wonder like he he's but his really good stuff is when he was, he's he was really good in the Valley of Eli. I mean, no one saw the movie. I somehow saw it like in a theater if I'm if I remember correctly. And I liked him in that. I mean, uh, I don't know. Well, uh, we can agree disagree, I guess. But he and I do get what you mean as far as like as they get older, they kind of lean more into their shtick. That's kind of like what you know you pay to see, I guess. Ad Astra, he was like that. In Ad Astra, like over the top. Like yeah. I know he's supposed to be like the nutty dad who's lost his mind in in space, but he was the nutty dad who lost his mind in space. All right, fair yeah. enough. Um, but yeah, all right. So and just to wrap up this section, my final film is going to be uh, oh you haven't decided yet uh, i mean you guys took all the good ones of course oh you know what fine i'll do this one this is definitely keeping in the theme and just because it leans sci-fi doesn't mean it doesn't count all right district mm -hmm. and this is the one where it's a an alternate reality where where uh a, you know aliens kind of came in 1982 and it's kind of you know these these you know big motherships sat on on cities and we kind of learn to live with them right they're kind of like our, our our peaceful overlords whatever and 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 basically these uh these undesired refugees are soon quarantined in you know in government camps then forcibly relocated and then so it's kind of it's, it's kind of like a, a take on on apartheid south africa to an extent it was set in south africa like johannesburg like a segregates johannesburg um and it was it was interesting. It was you know a little bit of action, a lot a lot of bit of sci-fi. Uh, it basically gave American audiences Sh Charlto Copley, I think I said his name right, who's now in everything. He's South African, but he's kind of like the the go-to guy for Neil Blomp Camp. If I'm saying that correctly, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he's been in a lot of stuff with that. And Sh and Charlto, uh, he got a lot of work off this. He was in the A Team. He was in uh, totally underrated. I love that movie, the A Team of uh, uh, movie reboot. Charlotte's great in it. He can do a lot of accents. He's talented. So, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I remember saying, I like uh, I liked it. I thought it was clever. It was smart. I, I And done on a low budget, too, apparently. I think it only did, had like five or ten million to shoot the sucker. So I feel like District 9 is similar to, and this is connected to something else, right? This is connected to like a larger movie. I don't think. Or was it was was the like original IP as like a graphic novel or something? No, I don't. I don't think it was a graphic novel. Uh, I don't know, but they. Um, I I feel like this movie was good. Like it was definitely it was fun. It was entertaining, but I feel like this movie is done a lot. Like I feel like this is the same as what's that TV show? The Colony. Oh, the Colony. Yeah, that was good. I feel Four like it's, seasons, yeah. RIP. 
Who? The Colony, the one with uh, Josh Holloway, the the guy from. Well, I, mean, I only saw this to the second season, but so I don't yeah. know who I don't know who died. You said somebody R.O.P., but I don't actually want to. Know. No, 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 no. R.I.P. The show that, that they failed to renew it after I think it's third or fourth season. It it, it made like a, a reboot in its. I think it was fourth season that was really interesting. I was very interested to see where they're going to go with it. Wayne Brady played the heavy, if you can imagine that. <laughs> really? So, yeah, it was. Yeah, it got really interesting, and then they kind of killed it. Three seasons, yeah. They like, killed after three seasons, so I don't know. I, I, so, I mean, if, so if the alternative reality here, because I held on to one. So you, you, I held on to one because I thought you would say it's too sci-fi. But what's that? Um, World War Z. That's fucking awesome rewriting that's, history. That's, that's a good one. Yeah, but yeah, anyway. actually, honest. Well, yeah, that's 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 a good one. I, I like it. I dig it. Um, well, you get into that sci-fi world, you can do all of them though. It's tricky because World War Z and District Nine, with District Nine being a great movie, also are are somewhat could be considered the future, right? But no, well, no, well, the thing about District Nine is that it it takes place in our present, but something happened in the past with these aliens coming that establishes our current present. So it, it's an, it's an alt history. Just like Groundhog Day. <laughs> All right. You know what? Exactly. You know what, you guys? <laughs> We're ending this segment, damn it. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a short break to bring people who are new to the pod up to speed on Cinema Draft, the company, and how to play the draft stream game. We'll be right back right after this. All right. And we're back. Okay. So last week's quarantine movie of the week was Beirut. And that is the one with. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it wasn't Beirut. It was. Uh, oh yeah, it was Beirut. I'm sorry. I'm I'm all off. We're recording this on a different day than we normally do. Uh, no shade. Uh, so last week's was Beirut. This week's. Uh, I, I just said it. This week's quarantine movie of the week shall be Collateral, and that's the one oh. where a wild night in L.A. where Tom Cruise plays a hitman and he forces Jamie Foxx's cab driver remember when we had those <laughs> cab driver who scored him all throughout the city of la on a wild night conducting on him conducting his business that might or may that may or may not include a bunch of murders so that was a good one um not to dwell on, on, it. on it should we comment on it if, if you have the time sure go for it <laughs> that movie i remember that movie being one of the first movies to ever use not film right that remember that was like digital oh, yeah. we were doing a video yeah, but that movie has a lot of really cool scenes. It doesn't totally make sense though. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're at the end of the movie, you're like, "Huh?" But there's a bunch of really cool scenes, and Tom Cruise is—he's just good. Yeah, might be crazy, but he's always good. It's and Jamie Foxx is good. It's a Katie Holmes special there. <laughs> uh, oh, both uh, great actors, both. Love them some Katie. Uh, that that's the movie that sparked it, wasn't it? It was that's where he yeah. That's that's where the tide turned on that relationship. Okay. Oh yeah, Mark Ruffalo, you know, kind of forgot yeah, about Mark him. Ruffalo's another one. I don't know sometimes. What? Like, like sometimes I'm like come on like, now. What's, the, what's that show he's got now with two people? I shouldn't start this guy a bit. What's yeah, that show? Should. Ben Ben plays two characters. What what's that? Did you guys watch that where he's playing two characters? I haven't seen it. I know what it is. It's HBO and it's Mark Ruffalo. That like that was fun. I enjoyed it. Wait, that that look means what? That look means you you're in. Yes, Mark Ruffalo and HBO. Like yeah, see, I saw that. And I was like, oh, I'm never watching that. I would I would love to have time to watch that because I think he's giving some sort of tour de force performance. Oh, oh, I know this much is true. Yeah, I, I heard I heard good things, but I just didn't want to be depressed for six hours. So yeah, I'm, I'm good. Like, That's... can you take the idea of the Hulk and then take all the fun out of it, and then there you have it. <laughs> all right, fair. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll keep it moving since since some of us have a bedtime. Um, oh, right. I'm really angry. I'm so sad. Black Widow, <laughs> please take care of me. All right, so <laughs> moving on to our draft stream. Up to oh shit, I'm not even presenting, am I? Okay, well let's present. <laughs> We did that screen on Zoom. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, um, I'm going to present my screen like I should have done the first time with Mark Ruffalo, collateral, all that. Yes. Anyways, um, for the previous segment, just real quick, please tweet us your tweet length review at Place in the Draft on what you think of Collateral, if and when you get a chance to watch it. All right. So our draft stream update 
for the week. Last week, we had a thriller. We had a three-way tie at the top. Imagine that. We had Gamble24x7, the homie, a.k.a. the Simba Draft all-time money winner. And in closing quickly on the Draft Stream all-time money winner, we had him in first. He he got first for breaking the tie. Uh, I was in second. And in a bit of an experiment this week, I was experimenting with an optimizer. And my experiment with optimizer revealed that Jaybird, the all-time Draft Stream Money winner has been secretly using an optimizer this entire time. That's why he's so good, everybody. Now, there's nothing against the rules in it. I actually redid the terms of service when we are a web app again in a few short weeks. Optimizers are totally fine and friendly as we ex expand and scale up and have a web app with lots more players on the site and playing the game. I fully expect people to be optimizing their call sheets. It's fine. But I want to do one as an experiment this week <clears throat> to see – what would happen, what, what the, day, the changes or deviations would be in score from what the optimal call sheet at game lock was due to the final call sheet. And honestly, as you can see, it ended up, ended up being first, so not much deviation this week, but there was a lot of movement right below us that could have overthrown our carefully laid plans. So basically we had a four-pack of, actually a five-pack of Robin's Wish that uh, 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 no, I'm sorry. An optimal stack of Robin's wish. Uh, two headliners, a co-star, day player. Mm -hmm. That's the Robin Williams documentary. I kind of like look 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 back on his life, whatever. I guess my mom wants to see that, and people liked it. I guess it got one of our highest scores on the platform. Had to have exposure to the boys. Had to have exposure to. I'm thinking of ending things, even though it, it got started hot and somewhat cooled off. And raised by wolves. This is the Ridley Scott sci-fi TV show. Uh, I'm on the third episode. So far, he's directed all three. So this is kind of interesting. It's good. Good. it's I I like it. It's not for everybody. Um, it's very it's very dystopian. It's one of those dystopian future type things where the human race is basically trashed the planet by trying to kill each other. So we have to kind of escape and perpetuate the race in another planet. And it's this whole tension between androids who are trying to perpetuate. The, the human race under an atheist model and then the surviving band of atheists, or the surviving band of believers were all on this big ship they call an ark who believe in some sort of made up religion called myth or something or other. And so the tension between believers and not believers, atheists and, 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 and believers, androids and humans, all that's kind of mixed up on this deserted type planet that they've been kind of cultivating to rehab humanity. It's kind of cool. I'm digging it. And there's a, I guess there's an accompanying podcast as well. So it's, I mean, if you're, if you're willing to go there, if you're willing for like, you know, long pauses, moody landscapes, strong, you know, colors and stuff like that, and a dystopian future, I'd say check it out. Okay. And so that was part of our, our game plan strategy. Uh, and for, and since you guys have not played, I still encourage it. I still will send you the links. Please play one of these days, even though we will be going to a web app pretty soon which looks totally beautiful. The winner from the week before, Brown Baby, a.k.a. the Draft Mom, she won. She actually outright won a, a contest. She beat out like 18 other call sheets two weeks ago. I was very proud of her. This week, not so much. She went all in on Bad Boy Billionaires, and had she done, had she caught the news that Bad Boy Billionaires is actually being held up in India's high court, <laughs> one of the Bad Boy Billionaires was, Pitching a, was pitching a fit and somehow convinced Netflix not to release it globally, including stateside. I was very upset. I really wanted to watch it. Somehow, 13 people or whatever have seen this movie some way, somehow, or this series. It's like a docuseries on Netflix uh, that's not on Netflix right now. Somehow, 17 people have seen enough to rate it. I'm very jealous. But uh, I, but she went in all on that. It cost her. So that's why she ended up back in the pack. So this week... Turn out to turning our eye to this week's talent pool, 20 fresh ones. It's going to be a down week. I'm calling it right now. Last week, we actually were above average, 85, 82. A lot of stuff I wanted to watch. I, literally, like Mulan, Measure for, well, not Measure for Measure. Mulan, Love Guaranteed, I gave 30 minutes to. Uh, Bad Boy Billionaires, we already discussed. Away was excellent. I want to see that. AP Bio. I think we might have covered all, some of these earlier on. Anyways, uh, this week, not a ton of stuff I want to watch. I definitely want to watch Woke. That actually dropped on 
Hulu yesterday, and this is the Malcolm. No, damn it, damn it, I almost did it. This is the Lamorne Morris, not Malcolm Barrett. Lamorne Morris. They tend to favor each other. Lamorne Morris is from New Girl. He's in a bit of a comedy, maybe a comedy drama, where something happens to him, and now all of a sudden his drawings, he's like an artist, his drawings are all speaking to him, and all these in inanimate objects are actually talking to him and fucking with his head. That's how G-Nice, G-Nice, yeah. are you there? Aisha yeah. ran the room for this show. Shut up. Yeah. Aisha? Our, our homegirl, Aisha Carr, who is writing the, the Will Smith, uh, Kevin Hart version of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, uh, ran the writer's room for this show. Oh, very nice. Uh, looks you like... I know. That's fucking awesome. Aisha, yeah, I don't know. what else do we yeah. know from? You would know, she worked on uh, uh, Carmichael's show, Everybody Hates Chris, The Rail Show, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Obviously, you can read she did this. Top five, there. right? She, she wrote Top Five with Chris Rock. She wrote um, Death at a Funeral with Chris Rock. Oh, she's been uh, getting checks for about six, seven years now. Good for her. And she, they just uh, announced uh, Troop Beverly Hills. They're remaking, which she wrote as well. <laughs> so she's. Getting that money. Working black writers. She is black, right? Yeah. Aisha could also be Indian, so you never know. All right. You love to see it. E even if they're Indian, you love to see it. Get your money, writers. Is that a, is that an Indian name? Aisha is an Indian name. I I I I mean, we you know black folk. No, people. no, no. no, no. Let's, from let's, another black creation. Let's let's. I'm telling you, there are there are Indian I, Aishas. I, I, I'm just confirming. I didn't know there were Indian Aishas. I just, yes, very much so. <laughs> of, I congratulate. That dude is from Chicago. Uh, oh, um, uh, Lamorne Morris. Lamorne. Yeah. Lamorne Morris. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting caught up on his name. He had a weird British accent when he was on uh, that that terrible movie you didn't see at the movie theater. Uh, okay. He, the movie. he has a British accent. You guys. Oh know. yeah, he is. He is in that. He is in that. Yeah. I, I I've wiped that movie out of my mind because. <laughs> I, the only thing I remember from that night is how terrified it was. <laughs> I was actually at the movies, <laughs> but no, this looks good though. I'm very, I'm very excited for that. Uh, I think strategy this week will kind of center around uh, woke. Actually, this is going to be a down week for salary. Our highest, uh, our highest uh, uh, salaried flick is actually going to be, if it's not woke, I think it's no, it is woke. Sixteen thousand five hundred for Lamorne Morris and sixteen two for Blake Anderson. Sashir Zamata. Uh, from Saturday Night Live fame. She's on this as well. So I'm going to have some exposure to that. I think Unpregnant could be decent, although there's no advanced info on this yet. I watched The Social Dilemma last night. Uh, uh, this is also, this is the second highest uh, title, uh, salary title on the slate. I watched it last night. It will fuck you up. Uh, it's actually really good the way they do it. As far as like, it's basically it's essentially a documentary, but they intersperse like an ongoing uh, fictional story starring Skylar Gazondo. You might recognize him from um, uh, The Righteous Gemstones and also uh, uh, Booksmart. He was he was kind of like the the, the wannabe uh, cool kid in Booksmart. And and so they so it's kind of cool the way they do it because they talk. You have all these talking heads, people who are working inside the belly of the beast at Facebook, Google, what have you. And then you also have the story acting out like. All the stuff they're talking about, and you see them playing. You know, you see like Vincent Kartheiser's characters are basically kind of like this AI, which is kind of like fucking with Skylar Gazondo's character in real life. Oh, we want we need to put more ads in front of him to make him, you know, buy, you know, see shoes. We want him to see more shoes, so let's do this. Let's let's have a notification pop up. It's really really wild. I recommend everyone to watch it because it'll make you want to turn off all your fucking notifications forever and ever. <laughs> so the social dilemma I think is actually going to be pretty hot too. This is going to be the type of week because the salaries are so low. Generally, like last week we had the boys clocking at nineteen thousand five hundred. Damn near twenty percent of your budget would go towards one actor. This week you can spread the love around a little bit. Do a headliner stack here, headliner stack from woke. Um, I think some hidden value, uh, LA's finest. Oh my goodness. Uh, um, I think some hidden value actually could be from in, in enslaved because maybe white guilt will make people rate this higher. I don't know. <laughs> Deranged granny. Wow. <laughs> you know, I had to have that on there lifetime. Y'all be wilding and cuties. 
it's just this is going to be where people will will either punt or or staff up or stock up for the low ball call sheet. This thing doesn't have a chance in hell. And I say that because even though it sounds kind of interesting, the fact that it kind of deals with the 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 hyper sexualization of, of young girls, it's just turned people off. I think I saw a Google user score of three. Not 33, three. I've never seen anything <laughs> like a 20 on Google. That, that's like insane. So and and the and the actual average in our game for Google user score is somewhere around 68. So anytime you start with a three, it gets weighted 60%, you're in for a fucking world of hurt. So so check that out. Black Boys actually is one I think is gonna be could be a sleeper. Once again, White Guild. Also, it might be good. Also, Carmelo Anthony's on there. Is uh, I think he's also a producer too. Uh, he's on on there. Uh, Chris Carter, Harry Edwards. You know, basically talking about you know save our black boys. So people who are into this shit will seek it out. We'll probably rate it highly. Oh shit, four point. God damn it, racist, racist. IMDb, are you at it again? Uh, I would I would say that coastal elites will probably get some high ratings. It seems like snobbery at its finest. <laughs> well, yeah, so, so I had a theory on this with the, with the the preview on Monday, with the wrap up from last week and and the preview of this week. I had a theory about this. I think people are tired. I think they're tired of politics. I, th I think they're they're tired of of polemical type stuff. And this is just like these are basically people. This is all shot. I think socially distanced. You know, I'm not sure if they use exactly Zoom, but they did like very basic setups for this. And I think it's just like a series of if not anthology, it's very kind of siloed. Like, all right, here's Issa Rae's story, here's Bette Midler's story, here's Sarah Paulson's story, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I think ratings wise, it might like the the critics might find it okay, but I think audiences will be exhausted. And I'm I'm this is like my shit, and I'm debating whether I want to watch this. I, mm -hmm. I think I might watch it mostly to see the format, like how they play the format expectations, but. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, if it is cheap, though, I will say this: it is definitely cheap. Coastal Elites is only sixty-two hundred. There's only six of them there, so if you're looking for salary relief, that might be an option. But I think Black Boys might be the mis the mispriced hidden value of the week if we can play on all of that <laughs> white guilt. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's bring this in for a landing. Some of us have have desk jobs in the morning and children, all that good stuff. I appreciate you all for coming back onto the pod. You guys are great. We will always have you in rotation. Come back and give us your <laughs> your heat rocks of cultural cul-de-sac opinions. Thanks for Groundhog everybody. Day. Groundhog Day. This is usually the time of the pod where I encourage you guys to plug your ish. So any any ish for you to plug, Kevin. The Republic of Sarah on the CW. Woo! Sometime in 2021, there Dynasty on Netflix. Right now, actually, how are you doing? Are you getting any updates on that? Uh, there's still there's season four. The room is going. They're taking some big swings, and I'm sure it's going to be as fun as always. Uh, with the lovely... On how it's performing on Netflix, so the first three seasons. Uh, well, it's got a fourth season, so <laughs> it's, it's doing well enough. Um, what else? That's it. Hopefully more stuff soon. All right. Amen. G nice. Anything you want to plug? Anything of anyone else's you want to plug? No. No. <laughs> the new edition album. Is it? Is it really? Well, no, I said get a new edition album. I oh. will say this. Ralph Tresman <laughs> dropped a single recently. It is not terrible. Johnny <laughs> really? Miller, I don't no. believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> no, it was like two weeks ago. Shut up on my Spotify. I was like, yeah, hell yeah, Ralph. The algorithm <laughs> knows you. You know? <laughs> the algorithm knows. So I checked out the video. It's super cheesy. It's great. <laughs> all right, Ralph Tresman making a comeback. What do I know? Maybe we all need more sensitivity. All right. Well, let's close this out. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody, for playing. Once again, on Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time, get in your call sheets. You know how to do it. The link to the game is in the, the description. By the time this comes out, you will have probably less than 24 hours to do it. But we want you playing. We want you uh, experiencing the Cinema Draft draft stream game. Thanks 
again to the tripod. The tripod. We'll be back next week with another great guest, another great top five. Thanks, everybody. We'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace. Yeah.